On the 10th of December 1948, 50 nations signed the Universal Declaration of Human Rights at the Palais de Chaillot here in Paris. 30 articles proclaiming a shared belief in the dignity and value of humankind. 70 years later, celebrations are being held at the very place where that fundamental text was signed. But what's left of the original declaration? Well, I'm joined on set by Caroline Carlson, choreographer, uh, poet. Uh, thank you so much for being here on the mm -hmm. show, as well as uh, Mathias Leridon. So you are a part of the, uh, you're a board member of the Manège de Chaillot, so a fund that supports the Chaillot Dance Theatre. You're also the co-president of the African Artists for Development. Thank you both mm -hmm. for being on the show today. Caroline, I want to start with you because the director of the Chaillot Dance Theatre, Didier Deschamps, chose you to perform in this exceptional performance to pay tribute to uh, human rights. You had Carte Blanche. Tell us what you created for this, uh, this celebration. Well, I worked very closely with um, Mathias Larendon, a Refugees on the Move. So I thought it would be incredible to work with two African artists, as Mathias works very much uh, supporting uh, the African refugees. And um, so I was very happy to be able to collaborate with this event. Because it was the idea was to have a cross-cultural yes. collaboration. Yes. What was the message that you were trying to get across? Uh, my message is I work with image. I mean, I have a Thai gay, um, Ahmed, who was fantastic. I mean, I don't speak, he speaks French, but I don't speak his la language from Chad. But what was interesting, we're universal. I can go like this heart. I can do this, I can open my hands, I can do this. So we share a common universal language. So my, my aim to, in this duet trio with live music was to dance through image, which I think was very strong. Image is very powerful. Very powerful mm -hmm. indeed. Now, to commemorate the 70th anniversary of the Universal Declaration of Human Rights, the Chaillot Theater commissioned an incredible sculpture by a Congolese artist, Freddy Tsimba. It's called the Porteuse de Vie, literally the carrier of life. Tell us more about this piece and just how important it is. It was not uh, a commission by the Théâtre National de Chaillot. It was a commission by the Foundation Manège de Chaillot, okay. who has been built uh, eight years ago now and uh, is supporting the uh, Théâtre National de Chaillot, the first foundation that supports a national theatre in France. And the idea of the members, uh, eight companies, was just to uh, uh, make this celebration something different. And we had the idea just to propose to an artist, we and, then we, the chose, right and mm. then we chose an African artist, just to uh, create a piece that will that will enter the collection of the Théâtre National de Chaillot. Since the opening of the theatre, 1937, no pieces of art have never been just welcome inside the theatre. And, and we, we thought that it was a real big symbol for the celebration of the Human Rights Declaration, just to offer officially to the theatre a piece of art, an African piece of art made with bullets which is not, I would say, the, the, the nice part of 10, the human rights. 10,000 bullets, if I... 10,000 bullets that uh, Pretty Simpa just uh, took from the, uh, the, the, the soil, the land of the uh, Democratic uh, Republic of Congo and just designed this uh, lady with no face. So it's she represents humanity. All, all, the, all the, the women in the humanity. So there's a universality... In, uh, in the celebration. And you, uh, Caroline, are performing alongside about 200 other uh, performers. Mm -hmm. uh, now, what role do you think that artists have in defending human rights? Well, each artist is different. I mean, I, I don't uh, usually speak in my work because I show, uh, again, through image. Um, I, I can only speak for myself. I mean, I come out in this incredible garbage dress that was made by Tata Shayo. And for me, it's very important. It's the declaration of mankind, but where now is a declaration of nature? It really has to be combined because uh, like I was speaking with uh, Matthias, okay, we have declaration, we're very uh, disponible, uh, sorry, available. speaking French. <laughs> we're very close to the other person, but what's happened, gonna happen when the seas rise? Pollution, we already see. We're in December. It's too hot. Mm. 
So I made a statement uh, also about nature, because I, I think that there we go together. Yeah, but I agree you, with Caroline, Caroline, or Caroline, and not Caroline, yeah. uh, on the fact that each artist uh, is very different. Absolutely. And I think that there's something which is common in the human rights fight everywhere in the world. Uh, when a government, when a state doesn't want just to give the human rights to the people, mm. the first target are always the artist. Because artist creation, artistic creation is always freedom. Absolutely. It's always a question of freedom. And it's, it's usually first. Yeah, and it's, always, it's first. And I think mm. uh, in, the, uh, in the countries in the world where the human rights are mm. not, I would say, the, mm. uh, the, the average mm. of, of the people, there's always a pressure against the artist. Yeah, the artist. And the artists are always using their, the power of creation mm. just to uh, fight for the human rights. Mm. Well, I want to talk about your fund, mm. the, uh, the African Artists for uh, Development. Uh, you're talking about the power of creation. Now, you have a, a, an initiative that's called Refugees on the Move that you were talking about. Tell us more about that initiative. The, the idea is just to use the power of creation for um, restoring for the refugees their self-esteem. <clears throat> when you are in a refugee camp in Africa, 50% of the refugees in the world are based in Africa. For 50% of those African refugees, it's the third generation which is on the same camp. There's no hope just to come back at home. They will stay on the, on the refugee camp. What is your life when your grandparents came, they had your parents and you are the grandchildren? There's no future mm. for them. Mm. And the idea is just to use the creation, the choreographic creation, not dancing lessons, but choreographic creation, just to um, gather all those refugees on the same objective, which is create with a choreographer mm. something which is an art creation. And, and you've what, had, sorry. And, and that is refugees on the move. And you've had programs in uh, Chad, the Central African Republic, Burundi, Burkina Faso, the Democratic Republic of Congo. Let's actually listen to an UNHCR program officer and a choreographer who participated in this program. The magic of the dance is what fédère les gens, quelles que soient les nationalités, quelles que soient les identités, les origines. Elle réussit vraiment à réunir les gens de tous bords ensemble. Au-delà du, du mouvement, au-delà de, de la danse, il y avait euh, une sorte de quiétude, une sorte de paix qui se construisait en eux-mêmes et qu'à travers la danse, à travers l'art, ils pouvaient transmettre certaines beautés, certaines euh, gaietés et qui les habitaient au fur et à mesure. Caroline, you mentioned that you've worked with uh, refugees on the move. Mm -hmm. What do you think it is about choreography or visual poetry, mm. as you like to call it, that fosters this cross-cultural dialogue? Well, what's so incredible with the film we just saw, uh, dance is a meditation in the present moment. So the mind is free. And you see from the picture, everyone's so uh, moving. And it, for me, it comes from an interior smile. And it, it's free. It's free, and I love to see these people who are seeing this. Well, look at those little girls, <laughs> and especially in Africans. You know, you've got this rhythm. No one can dance like a black person, <laughs> no. I tell you, when you've got this movie. <laughs> but it's so positive what uh, uh, Matthias and the refugees of the move have created. It, it, you know, we should all be like that. You know, when we all go to our political meetings? <laughs> mm -hmm. We should choreograph first. <laughs> we move together. <laughs> but it's very strong because, you know, I think, what, what is the first gesture of a baby? It's a smile. And it's the first symbol of motion. And basically, there's a chicken or the egg, what comes first, the word or the motion. Dance comes first. It's, it's natural. You see children, you see these great people. And it gives them um, a hope uh, to carry on. And also dance is universal. They can go to the next village. They can't understand, but they can't understand with dance. So there's a certain universality in dance, in art as well. And the yes, uh, Brazilian arts of it. Yeah. Well, talking about visual arts and photography, yes. the Brazilian mm -hmm. uh, photographer Sebastian Salgado mm -hmm. has often explored issues mm -hmm. of uh, human rights and the human condition. Uh, this in his acclaimed work that spanned over 100 countries since he began his photography career in Paris in 1973. And to celebrate the 70th Declaration of Universal Human Rights, he's 
exhibiting a series of photos at the Musée de l'Homme, which is right next to the Chaillot Theater here in Paris. This until June of 2019. Here he is uh, talking about how he chose the photos that he wants to exhibit. These 31 photos show the right to education, the right to dignity, to work, and all the others, including the right to have freedom of religion. So these are images that really fit into each of the chapters. Now, when you look at the world today, it seems like perhaps there's still work to be done when it comes to uh, human rights. What would you say? Would you say that these fundamental human rights are, are under threat, Mathias? I think we, we, we had a conversation with Caroline before the show, and um, I think we have to keep in mind that we could be in the future all refugees hmm. on the move because we will have just to uh, uh, leave our country, leave the coast leave uh, some cities. So I think that we have to, be, to keep in mind that we have to avoid to get a sort of a refugee's humanity. Mm. Because we will be asked by our children and grandchildren, mm. what did you do? So perhaps it's for artists to lead the way uh, when it comes to human yes. rights. Now, what's interesting is the uh, Chaillot Theatre has actually organized a month of creation around the theme of human rights. It's called Tous Humains. We are all human, uh, be sure to check it out. And we will have to leave you, unfortunately. Uh, we, our time has, has come up. Uh, we'll leave you with images of a special performance by refugees on the move to celebrate the 70th anniversary of the Universal Declaration of Human Rights. For more arts and culture news, head to our website and, of course, stay in touch on social media. Stay tuned to France 24. More news coming up right after this. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you.